What was the incident at your school, viewer edition? Hey folks, Mr. Fax here letting you know that this video contains a number of content warnings for this material on screen right here. And so if you do find yourself uncomfortable with that material, you may want to skip this video or watch with caution. Story one. I'm so sorry that it's extremely dark, but this is the incident. I was at a special needs school at the time, and being a parent of a special needs child can often be insanely stressful. I don't know how my parents have lasted this long, but I know a family that wasn't so lucky. My family knew them for many years before the day happened. We were especially very close to our mother, and she helped all the mums at the school with anything that they needed. My mother would speak to her on almost daily basis. But the dads didn't have such a thing, and eventually the worst happened. The dad thought he couldn't go on, and he built a gas chamber in his house and switched it on overnight, killing everyone inside. Nobody knew until the next morning when the school noticed they weren't there and nobody answered at home, so they came and saw it all. School was never the same. We were in mourning for over a year, and it became national news with all the media going crazy. There were flowers put up at their home and at the school, and they became legends. The whole community came together for them. The kids were really talented artists, and the art room was named after them. And there's a little bench named after them that we still sit down on and remember whenever we come past the school. Founded by the acting principal at the time, the men's group was made to help the dads to be able to talk about their struggles with each other and try to find solutions together. For a long time, all the dads at the school felt guilty as that one particular dad let them all down. Rest in peace, Maria, Eliza, and Martin. We will remember. I mean, this is a really tragic thing to hear about, but it does highlight the importance of, like, a men's group like that and the need for support for people. Like... I mean, raising any child is difficult, but yeah, raising a child with special needs, it can be a little extra challenge, and it doesn't hurt to have support, have help. You know, you don't have to struggle and do things alone. You can reach out to others and talk to others, or at least I hope that you're able to. You know, if you don't have a men's group and you're struggling with something, you know, or a women's group or whatever, it doesn't have to be men's. Uh, Make one. Try and find one online, something. And, you know, folks, if you know someone, you know, a dad, a mom, whomever that is struggling, maybe reach out. Give some help. Um, you know, when it comes to kids, they say, you know, it takes a village. And sometimes it really does. Story two. There was a girl from my school who ended up wrapping her car around a tree and died. She was a genuinely good person who treated everyone with kindness and compassion. Just remember to drive carefully on icy or wet roads. Getting home 10 minutes late is better than never getting home at all. Story 3. A group of ducks broke into the school. I wasn't in the school at the time, but a teacher told me about this. The school had a full lockdown. Lasted two hours. The ducks eventually got out. Everybody started crying from so much laughter. Can I just say, I know that this video is going to have some downers. Um, incidents at school are oftentimes pretty tragic. And so, story three, thank you for a little bit of strange levity of thinking about the day that ducks swarmed to school. Um, I think we all can appreciate that. Story four. Girl at the school jumped in front of a train. She was from the same year as us, but a different class. It was surreal. We had seen her all the time. For the whole day, all the teachers basically just kept all of us in the classrooms and talked about what happened. They were concerned about just sending us home and said there were journalists outside who would try very hard to talk to us, but we should say nothing. Some teachers were in tears. The whole school was in lockdown slash mourning mode. It was a very silent day. Except that one chemistry teacher in her first year of the job. She had an unannounced exam planned for today, and by God, she wasn't going to let this get in the way. We all knew how hard this teacher was to argue with, and we didn't have the focus or energy. School never felt more meaningless. We all did terribly at the test. Same teacher also once had me and my friends come in on a Saturday for detention. She said someone snitched on us, and we knew full well what this was about. We didn't. 
Not even a guess. We were boring kids. This was the only detention we ever got, and she refused to tell us what it was for, just kept saying we knew. This teacher taught me the most valuable lesson in school. Always stand up to bullies, no matter their authority. They'll punish you anyway, so at least earn it. I should have walked right out and shown that test to every journalist out there and told them her name. What is wrong with someone like that? Like, folks, I know you feel like you've got a job to do. You're a teacher. Your job is to teach. But they're human beings. There are people who have emotions and just lost someone. And very likely, the majority of them have never had to deal with loss like that. You have to be... You have to be reasonable about those kind of things. There are more important things than your test. Uh, you have to be able to have compassion. Being a teacher is not just present information, test on information. It's connecting with students and socializing and all that. And that is just a failure on those parts. And I hope it's something that this teacher has, was talked to about and hopefully has learned from. Story 5. In my school, a girl was expelled. A teacher had found her OnlyFans account, not knowing she was in our school, subscribed to it, and then ran into her. Currently, the police are in our school. The students are accusing a teacher of being a registered S offender. They have a photo of someone that looks a bit similar that is a registered offender, but kids are saying it's him. Story 6. This actually happened yesterday. These two girls thought it would be funny to do the Skull Breaker Challenge. They called over this kid who they pretended to be friends with, but are really bullying. So they had him stand between them and told him to jump, and they kicked his legs like how you're supposed to do in the challenge, and he fell back into the ground. He hit his head on the ground and was literally unresponsive. When he was able to talk, he couldn't remember where he was. The worst part? The girls were telling him, get up, we don't want to get in trouble. He has to be out of school for at least a week, and he cannot use electronics or do much else than just lay there in bed. This kid is annoying, but I do hope he's okay. He apparently almost broke his vertebrae. Okay, I don't, I, I've never heard of the Skull Breaker Challenge, which sounds very, very stupid. Don't, don't do something like that, and especially don't, do it to someone who doesn't know about it, who can't, like, protect himself or something. That's, uh, you know, there are challenges that are kind of interesting, and I know you want to be part of the, you know, the social zeitgeist and stuff, but this is maybe one to pass on. Story 7. So this happened a while ago, like 10 years back, but in my school there was a kid in year 6, grade 5, who drowned at his own birthday party. Didn't know the guy, but it was pretty shocking to everyone. Apparently, he was a very nice guy, had a lot of friends, and was laid back and easygoing. They made a bench with his name engraved onto it in his memory. It's decorated with football since it was his favorite sport. Now, because my school is an international one, and also it happened a while ago, pretty much everyone who was there at the time left except me. So, whenever anyone asks me why there's a bench with the name Aldrich on it, I tell them this exact story. Shame no one really remembers him there. Rest in peace, Aldrich. Story 8. I've got one. I once saw a girl with her friends get pulled a knife on by a super creepy boy. The boy had been stalking her all two years they went to the same school, and he made a blood oath to her by cutting his hand with a pocket knife. He also hacked her email and grades. Her friends were deeply concerned in the first year of the new school they were both in the same class. The second year, they weren't, and one Thursday, the boy was absent, so the girl decided, with her friend, to fake a date to get the boy off her back. The next day, the boy came back and heard the news from a gossip girl in his class. He then, at recess, pulled the knife. The girl quickly told the recess monitor, and he only got suspended for ten days. The girl was super scared all the time. Plot twist number one, this was in sixth grade at a gifted school. The next year, the girl was in an advanced homeroom, so every class she had the same people. The people in your homeroom share every class. She came to find out he was in her homeroom, a.k.a. all her classes, and her mother set a meeting with the school who did nothing about it. It was a rough and stressful year for her. He's still a creep to this day. Plot twist number two, that girl was me. Story nine. This was the incident that got me kind of moved out of art class. 
I was a quiet individual back in sixth grade, only talked to a few people, but I was super quiet, didn't care much for anyone, nor did I want to be in any social group. So anyway, this girl was trying to start stuff with me, tried to get me to fight her. She kept throwing stuff at me and making fun of my acne problem. I didn't retaliate, I just told her, you're not worth crap. And she proceeded to throw even more paper balls at me while I'm painting in peace. Then I got really annoyed and told her, feeling froggy jump, and so she got up and spit on me and my painting. She got written up, but her friends tried to pen the mess on me, saying I threatened her. The thing was, I was in a desk in the very back of the room, so got written up for threats and parents were called, told my mom what happened, and got moved out. Now I was known as the quiet coward, really annoyed that the teacher believed her even though she knew I wasn't a very bad kid or violent. Can I say, at the very least, um, don't, don't let that weigh around your neck too much. I feel like people can have a reputation in 6th grade and by 7th or 8th grade things can be forgotten. Um, but it does suck because this other person that's messing with you, like, just sounds awful. And that situation was not handled well. And I hope things are going better for you now, you know? Shake that reputation... Do and be whatever you want that isn't harmful to others. And, you know, life will get a lot better. Sixth grade is not a high point for anyone, but uh, I am sorry for what you've had to go through. Story 10. This was known as the Skittle incident in my school. A kid was eating Skittles in music class and his friend wanted some. So the kid threw a Skittle across the room to his friend, but it hit a random student. Apparently, that was the student's last straw. They got up, walked over, and promptly beat the kid up. Kid ended up in the hospital with a broken arm. Story 11. I remember a few years ago while I was in primary four, age eight or nine, a well-known teacher at my school passed away from a brain tumor. The year after she died, my school opened a memorial garden at the school in her honor. It was a very touching tribute. Story 12. When I was in 8th grade, there was a girl in 6th grade who was murdered, I think. Nobody in my grade really seemed to be affected much since we didn't know her, but I can't imagine what the other 6th graders were going through. The same year, there was also a car crash in the nearby high school where two students died. That year was cursed. Story 13. Two, actually. When I was a junior, my school had a blackout due to our yearly February ice storm. Somehow a raccoon snuck in and was caught in the gym by some teachers. They've advertised that moment with t-shirts. In senior year, some idiots decided to pull the senior prank by setting a chicken loose in the school. Administrators chased it for hours. By the time it was confined to the courtyard, the principal was so fed up with the situation that he straight up football punted the bird. Someone took a video of it, and it went viral. Caused a lot of controversy for the principal. Poor chicken. Story 14. Last year, there was an incident at my former freshman-only school that made local news where a group of about 10 students threw another student into the ceiling in an apparent social media stunt. The exact same type of incident happened at one of the middle schools in my district. The students did not face any suspensions, but were ordered to pay for damages caused to the ceiling. What? They threw another kid into the ceiling. Don't... Why? (laughs) Like, it sounds like the kind of thing that someone would have to kind of go along with, so kind of like a prank or a hazing, like, I don't know, don't, why would you want to do this kind of stuff? Like, I know it's like, ah, to heck with the school, screw the man, let's break some property, but I don't know, when it just gets you in trouble and could potentially get you in legal trouble, is that really worth it? I mean, I'm I'm a rebellious type in a lot of ways, but I mean, if I'm going to get in trouble with, you know, financially or with the law, I'm going to make it worthwhile at least. That's that's not good advice. Don't listen to me. Story 15. Guy launched a pen or something in a tech ed classroom and brought down a fluorescent light. It dumped its contents on a guy's backpack and he was like, "No!" A buddy of mine ended up breathing that stuff in and had to go to the hospital. He made a full recovery, but he still has a scar on his chest. I remember the teacher said, that is the most dangerous thing anyone has ever done in my class. Story 16. Two involved teachers. One was subtle, but the other was pretty bad. 
Neither made national headlines, but it was circulating in town. One of my fourth grade teachers passed due to an illness, not much known about it, so we made a purple ribbon funeral in her honor. She was pretty young, but what an incredible teacher, one of the best math teachers I had. Second one was with a chill as F teacher who I had for both U.S. history and was going to have for psychology, but around September to October, he was arrested. Apparently, some of the students had come forward with him grooming them. So yeah, I was shocked. Still burns in my memory that he would do such a thing. He's not a good person to me anymore. Story 17. So I have a story that would have fit here. During my sophomore year at high school, the campus would be put into what we called non-critical lockdowns, mainly to keep the students out of the halls and out of the way of the police. These were the standard operating procedures for bomb threats, which were hitting my high school at least once a week for that whole year. I don't know how many bombs were discovered or who was responsible, but this would often keep people from proceeding through their daily schedules and making it to their classes, especially since they'd stick to their 2.30 and to the school day. Story 18. My friend was working on a project for school. One kid DM'd him that they were going to jump the fence at his school to steal popsicles. He thought it was a joke and thought nothing about it. Later, it was in the news that a group of kids broke into the school and tripped a silent alarm to steal popsicles and almost got arrested. This was definitely peak middle school. It was in... <laughs> it was in the news that some middle schoolers... Story 19. At my school, one of the senior prank years back involved kids collecting roadkill, breaking into the school, and putting them in the ceiling. They only found the animals because there was a squirrel tail hanging out of a tile. A lighter story is in kindergarten, I had a kid that confessed his love to me in the bathroom. During parties, when my sister couldn't find me, she knew to walk up to this kid and ask him because he always knew where I was. Story 20. One of the more well-liked teachers at my school died of cancer. The school has several ways they memorialize him to this day, such as one of his most famous phrases being spelled in the wire fence around the tennis court using solo cups, we get to, and fundraisers for cancer research each year where the school sells t-shirts with his name and that same famous phrase. Rest in peace, Desi. We will never forget. Story 21. Our incidents, yes, multiple, were about this kid in fourth grade. He had extreme anger issues and would constantly curse and yell at the teacher. He even threw a chair at her. Everyone would laugh and joke about this kid and the teacher fighting and even saying they should make a TV show about it. He was expelled but came back after about a month. He wasn't as bad as before but was still pretty bad. A teacher told me he had issues with his dad and that was the reason for his behavior. I really hope that dude is doing okay. Story 22. Oh, here we go. My high school's incident didn't start with me, but I was a huge part of it. In eighth grade, I had gotten broken up with a few months before the start of this story. I was over my ex-boyfriend and was ready to find someone else. In my career development class, we had a seating chart, but after the teacher took attendance, she didn't mind if we moved to be with our friends so long as we did our assignments and didn't get too loud. I had a lot of friends in that class, but we all decided that we would do our assignments, then go over to where my best friend sat. We'll call him K for privacy. One day, as I was trying to quickly do my assignments so I could go over to K and our other friends, this dude I had never talked to before, we'll call him J. I'm in the forensics program, and J, as well as K, is in the debate program. I was wearing a shirt from a tournament we had recently gone to, and he comes over and makes a comment, asks for help on the assignment. I help him. We get to talking after, and I never went over to Kay. He walks me to the band room where I get my drumsticks and music books, which he helps me collect. On the way out of the band room, we discover that he's a bus and I'm a car. To keep talking to me, he asks for my number, and I give it to him. We call that night until his phone dies. Meanwhile, all of my friends in that class are asking about him. We talk in class and after school for five days. That Sunday, he sent me a YouTube video. I watch it and listen to this demented statement talking about underage intercourse and R. I am obviously appalled and I don't respond to him, but lucky me, that day right after that was Valentine's Day. I describe the incident to Kay and our other friends when Jay comes over and hands me a note. I take it from him and he runs over to his friend, T. 
Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Jay and T looking at me nervously. I open the note, and he's asking me out. I show my friends, and this one, A, she takes it from me and rips it up, saying that she's going to fight him. I tell her to chill and wave Jay over. I tell him no, show him the video, and he denies the whole thing. He stays quiet for a few weeks, then fails to talk to me again. Later, he starts talking to one of my good friends, M, who has a boyfriend, F. He continues to try and talk to us both, making tiny comments and perverted advances. The next year, freshman year, he starts harassing many more girls. This includes one of my other friends, D, who he thinks he's thought he was dating, but she's actually a lesbian and never talked to him before. Me, D, and M are furious at him when some new information came to light. Two other friends of mine, L and N, had been harassed by him before. It got so bad for N that she went digital. This was when you did online schooling and only came in for involved electives like band or forensics. We all got so fed up with him that D ended up reporting him. L told me she had been in the same class as him when he got called into the office. Nothing was done. M went in, same thing happened. L went in, same thing happened. I went in, same thing happened. Our friend R, who was still in touch with N, got her to come in and the same thing happened. K had seen almost all of this, and he was friends with M as well. All three of us went in, and this time they had gotten enough reports that they brought in N, L, M, D, K, R, me, and J all came together. N, L, M, D, and I told them what he had said and done while K and R confirmed what they could. J denied it all, and they believed him over us. Eventually, his Snapchat was found. On his story, he talked about us and our situations with him. It was all there except the parts about what he had said and done. We all took the school this new information and every girl was asked about him. Even more that I had thought came forth and said something. He was expelled and we all went on into better lives. Please, if you work in a school or have any ties, listen to the girls the first time. Do something. Please. <sighs> okay, this is, uh... This is a lot of story, and all the letters are a little bit confusing, but I think the point was absolutely made. And, yeah, for the school to keep refusing after, you know, witness after witness, near victim after victim, you know, just coming up and the school doing nothing until they're presented with, like, more and more evidence, that's absurd. And teachers, principals, whatever... You need to learn to listen to these people just a little bit more and take these things a bit more seriously. Because if they hadn't happened to find this evidence and do something, then something bad could have potentially happened because of this person. You know, I mean, that is not a risk that you should be taking. Story 23. This year was crazy. One of my teachers was totally crazy and got reported in every single school she worked in. She yelled to everyone, called everyone deaf if we hadn't heard what she said, and she was the only one who tried to take me out of my drawing book when I was using it because I finished everything that the teacher sent for work, and that's an insult for me. She eventually got fired. A classmate wrote a note saying he was going to do a school shooting, and the day after the note was found, no one went to school, although there were classes. The next Monday, the classmate apologized for the note, and the story finished. For us, because the parents' group was in a pure civil war. Story 24. Finally, one I can share a story of. So, this was like six years ago when I was in sixth grade. I already went through a terrible house fire I woke up to and saved my family from. So basically, it was fall that day, also on a Monday, and so of course the heat was on, but we did not know that the one in the library was broken and started smoking. So we got back to class from lunch, and I thought that the unclean air and smell that I went through was illusions that my PTSD from the house fire. So then everyone started asking each other if they saw an unclear air and smelled something. Then I knew something was off. Then the principal came and asked us if they knew where it was coming from. We said no. I started getting scared for obvious reasons. Then all of a sudden the fire alarm went off and I instinctively grabbed my backpack. When we were leaving, I heard them say, it is not a drill. I got more scared about the school burning and freaked out from PTSD. After some people in my class helped me calm down, they knew what I went through. 
We had to sit in the rain when they said we had to get on the buses and go to the high school, so we did. I went insane from the chaos. They announced it was just smoke from a broken heater and we would not be able to get their stuff. People freaked out over their phones for no reason, finally got out, and was luckily able to become sane enough to not go crazy from the noise, chaos, and how long it took. Story 25 My high school was an open campus, so we would have a few police officers from our local police station to patrol the area because sometimes there would be incidents of students trying to play hooky or worse. There was this one officer we all genuinely liked. He was a really cool, down-to-earth guy that even the delinquents respected him. He would always patrol the area with a smile on his face and would greet us. It was a big campus, but he somehow was able to know all the names of everyone. When a student got in trouble, he didn't immediately act like a bad cop. He would talk to the student who was in trouble and tell them that it's not too late to try to change their ways. 90% of the time, that pep talk worked. During my senior year, it was just a normal day. We all went to school and we greeted our favorite officer and that was it. Later that night, I got a text from one of my friends that he died. He was playing tennis with his kid and he just dropped dead. We couldn't believe it. We saw him that morning and he was in good health. Everyone was devastated the next day. Even our principal, who was known for being a bit strict, was crying when he announced it on the intercom. The rest of the week, we raised funds to help pay for his funeral and send flowers to his wife and kids. His funeral was private, but we had a small memorial service at our school auditorium. There wasn't a dry eye in that auditorium, and even when it was over, we were still devastated. We got a new officer afterwards to patrol the area, but it wasn't the same. Rest in peace, Officer W. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.